Hello and welcome back to the weekly Q&A. Here we are starting the episode off with a dirty lie. This hasn't been a weekly Q&A for like months, but I am working on it and I blame the delay between this here episode and the previous one fully on Heart of the Swarm and Bioshock Infinite. I blame it on those two games. I actually finished Heart of the Swarm today and I'm super happy about that. I'm not going to talk about the ending until I've actually uploaded all the videos. So, you can feel free to ask about Heart of the Swarm, the entirety of Heart of the Swarm, because by the time next week's Q&A goes up, and no, that's not going to be like a month from now, by the time that goes up, I should have already uploaded all the Heart of the Swarm videos, the lot of them, so feel free to ask about that. But, I'm working on trying to get this back to a proper weekly schedule, and right now, I've got a whole lot of questions. I think there are three full pages worth of them, and there are some really good ones in here, mixed in with some, some that we've seen before. Let's get started. From Zeppo3k, dude, if you want to LP old games, then do it. This is actually not a question, I don't know why I'm starting with this, this is terrible, this is the worst Q&A ever. Seriously. There are enough people doing these new games already, so do something different. Ultima 7 is a great choice. The old Thief games would be cool too. So, interesting story. I tried to install Thief 1, Thief Gold actually, to see if it was recordable. And in my honest opinion, it's possible, but it's going to be super difficult. Mainly because the game switches engines. It like goes between this static low resolution menu engine to the in-game 3D engine when you just like press escape on your keyboard or open your map or open your objectives. For some reason that's a thing. It has to change resolution completely and when it does that then it kills Fraps or most other recording software. I realized that something like XSplit or whatever would probably record it fine and maybe I should look into that but it's going to be kind of difficult to record. Maybe Thief 2 or Thief 3 would be easier. I don't know. And on the topic of Ultima 7, I would love to, at some point, do something with that. I keep saying it, but I want to do it. I really do. And with all the new Ultima or Ultima-inspired games coming out now, in the next while, it makes even more sense. So yes, I'd like to do old games. I just need to sort of clear my schedule of all the stuff that I'm busy with right now. And I guess this is the perfect time to talk about it, because... Most people would at least watch the first five minutes of the Q&A, so here we go. I want to at some point end Skyrim, I know it's a bit of a shocker, but when I'm done with Dawn God, most of Hearthfire, like at least seeing everything in Hearthfire, and Dragonborn, then there are a couple of really big and interesting quests and stuff that I want to look at, but then I'll probably have to end Skyrim. I mean, at some point that game is not going to be on this channel anymore, it's going to be sad, it's going to be pretty tragic, but... That's going to end at some point, probably sometime this year. I'm going to ramp up the production on Skyrim episodes soon, and I'm going to see if I can just get some of it done, because I want to experience it. It's an amazing game. The DLC that they released, pretty cool thus far, and, you know, I just want to play it. I'm sure you guys want to see it too. XCOM is going to probably end at some point as well. I don't know if I'm going to keep that going for a third season. It depends on how well or how interesting or how fun the second season is or goes or progresses. I realize I <laughs> couldn't really end that on is, but we'll see. Bioshock Infinite, you know, that's going to be a pretty long game, but it has an end. It's a kind of linear experience. It's not like Skyrim where you're just going to be able to go off and do things. Heart of the Swarm, as I mentioned, is done. So when I've cleared my schedule of a bunch of these things, then I'm going to think about adding more. Because this week, specifically, I'm bringing the mailbox back. I've got Project Paperbird coming up. I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I want to get up. There are adventure worthies coming out. I looked at Steam just before I started recording to make sure I'm going to do a Warframe adventure worthy. I spent a bit of time with it today just to familiarize myself with it. I've also got Evo Land coming out tomorrow, which I really want to have a look at. I'm super keen for that. And a whole lot more. So I'm kind of busy at the moment. My lines, my bandwidth 
is being used 24 7 at the moment i'm uploading all the time i'm rendering all the time that i'm not playing i actually really need another pc at some point i spoke about that in my channel update about upgrading and stuff or not upgrading but getting a whole new pc so i can use this one just for rendering and uploading and stuff like that ah. <sighs> that was the first question that wasn't even a question i spent like so much time answering it van gogh dude i love you <laughs> that's brilliant thank you so much i've always wanted someone as famous as you to say that when is your birthday my birthday is on the 1st of september also known as the second best day of the year the best day is helene's birthday which is already passed 30th of january there you go maybe the second best day is actually nero's birthday one feb and mine will be the third best i'll take that spot so james threadingham who is your favorite character in skyrim and bioshock this is interesting i actually spoke to elin about this just before i started recording and i honestly don't think that i would in any way possibly be able to tell you who my favorite character is in bioshock one or two because the characters in that game just that i don't even know it's like fontaine ryan atlas the main character who isn't much of a character to begin with tenenbaum is there i don't even know i have no idea i don't know where to start with that but i can tell you now that bioshock infinite's out i can easily tell you that i think my favorite character in that will probably be elizabeth and those two british people that keep popping up everywhere with the funny music they're super cool they are amazingly fun every time i've met them thus far it's just been such a hoot so they're kind of cool too skyrim the characters in skyrim don't have much character i don't know i think that at the moment at least i mean i'm a big fan of kajo obviously huge fan of kajo but at the moment at least i I feel there are a lot of strong characters in the game, but personality-wise, so if I had to choose my favorite, I'd say that Serana, just because of the time we've spent together, has been kind of interesting. Because you actually get to know her. You really do. And you get to know how annoying and whiny she gets. But that's all part of it. So she's kind of cool. I like her. I know I'm not thinking of all the characters in Skyrim. There have been so many already. I'm probably skipping over some really interesting ones but that's just too bad in recent memory like really recent sarana has been kind of cool then mary jane how is nero doing i don't think i've seen a video with him for a while and obviously how are you and elin doing myself and elin are doing great really well nero is doing even better his skin problems have pretty much entirely cleared up is he even here not here right now he's probably in the lounge sleeping because he likes his peace and quiet he likes to sleep in silence and in the dark i appreciate that about him and i get it i totally get it it's noisy here especially when i start talking he's doing really well we are taking him to the beach every week again so he's loving that still getting two walks a day one in the morning one in the evening and sometimes we go for runs instead of walks but his skin problems have pretty much cleared up now i think it's to do with the carpet that we've got here and we're going to be ripping this out soon enough i actually made a vlog about that a while ago but it's also got to do with the fact that we were giving him a bunch of stuff and it was like really rich by stuff i mean things that the vet gave us she gave us this little uh, squirty pump thing with food enrichner i'm just going to call it that but it contains lots of vitamins and goodies that are good for dogs but it was too much for nero he's a sensitive puppy to begin with so his sensitive food like really rich food combined with that combined with the other stuff that we got from the vet in recent weeks or months it was all a bit much for him and i think that was also just causing his skin to act up and now that we've cooled down on that we've just given him plain pellets he's on a much more vanilla diet vanilla being plain in that sense of the word not vanilla the flavor uh, since we've been you know doing that with him he's been much better maybe it's been the beach as well maybe it's been therapeutic for him who knows but Nero's doing incredibly well 
So, also I'm missing the Dishonored videos now that you've finished the game. Have you finished Dunwall City Trials yet? And are you considering doing a high chaos playthrough? So, no to the high chaos playthrough and no to Dunwall City Trials. I've still got two trials left. I'm going to be doing them this week sometime. Also, instead of doing a high chaos playthrough, I'll be doing the DLC. Knife of Dunwall is coming out soon and the Brigmore Witches will come out after that. Both going to be focusing on Dowd and his adventures in Dunwall. Super, super keen for that. So keen. Dowd was one of my favorite characters in the game just because he seemed much more complex than we had time to explore. Like, we just didn't get to see all there was about him. Made me sad. So, I'm definitely going to be doing that. Then, next question. I have to move through these kind of quickly if I can because there are three pages of them. Man child caught a block of chocolate today for health, eh? How large a block? 200 grams? <laughs> No, no, 200 grams is a slab, not a block. And I think 200 grams is a rather big slab. I mean like a block, like a block, okay? A block, a little block. Trevor Sherwood, hi Lumen, my question for this week. If you could have any old time game come back as an expansion, or I suppose he means re-release, which would it be and why? <sighs> So, a while back I probably would have said Baldur's Gate, but now the Enhanced Edition is out, I haven't had much time to play it, but I'm happy that it's there. The obvious answer for me is definitely going to be Ultima 7, I would love to see a remake of that, or even Ultima 9, which I feel is the one game that just... It didn't work. You know, I enjoyed it when I played it. I loved it when I played it. But it felt like it was rushed out. And it felt like they were, at the time at least, just focusing on trying to make it look amazing. And sort of trying to focus on the visuals of the game instead of the story and how it played out. But I would say one of the Ultima games. Let's just leave it at that. One of the Ultima games needs to be remade now. And I know that Ultima Forever is coming out and Richard Garriott's working on Shroud of the Avatar and all that. But I just don't know about those games yet. I don't know if they're going to be amazing. I don't know if they're going to be as good as the old ones. Because Shroud of the Avatar... Uh, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> it makes me happy and sad at the same time. Happy that Richard Garriott seems to have some good ideas with what he wants to do with it. But at the same time... What we've seen and heard thus far hasn't been that great. He has been listening to the community though, so I have hot. I have hope that we're going to see something great coming from him and the studio that he's working with, but I just don't know. In Ultima Forever, we've seen so little of that that I just can't say it. It looks like it's going to be way too casual. So please, remake Ultima 7, for goodness sake. Why not? Also, one of the Final Fantasy games would be great. I know that they're re-releasing them all on on iOS, so if they keep coming out on iOS, if perhaps one day we see Final Fantasy 7 on iOS, that'll be fine. I just need to get myself an iPad at some point, and then I'll enjoy it all that much more. Next. Holy Ting Ting. Lumen, it would be glorious if you would play the Mass Effect 3 DLC and record them. Uh, if not all of them, I recommend Omega and Citadel, they are more your kind of thing, and would mean a lot of sense, because you're the one who hooked me on the Mass Effect series. I'm glad I did that, because I personally am a huge fan of the series. Before Mass Effect 3 came out, I went back, after already hadn't played them, and played through Mass Effect 1 and 2 in preparation, straight through. I tanked it, okay? I maxed those games, and I had such a great time. Best couple of days or week or whatever of my life, so good. Well, maybe not the best, but still. Really good. And uh, I would say that because of that, because I enjoyed those and playing through Mass Effect 3 so much, I would definitely strongly consider going back and playing the DLC. I actually had another comment here. Let's just see if I can find it. There it is. So from Victor Milkovic. <laughs> maybe it's Victor Milkovic. 
or Milkovic. I'm not sure. I had to think for a moment there because I can't actually see the L. I don't know why I can't see it, but it is there. I thought it was Mikovic. Anyway, he gave ratings. It's his own personal ratings of the DLCs. Leviathan, 8 out of 10. Omega, 6.5 out of 10. And Citadel, 9.5 out of 10. In my opinion, just love the whole reunite with old squad mates thing. So that's the ratings that he gave the DLCs. And it's interesting because Citadel did look like the most interesting one to me, or the most fun one at least. I don't know much about Omega or Leviathan. But I am kind of keen to try the DLCs. I've still got Mass Effect installed on my PC, so it is a possibility. I'm just not sure when. I spoke about how little time I've got at the moment, so we'll see. We will see. Tokyo Creed Lumen, if you have any... If you could have any character from a video game as a sidekick, who would it be? So, I meant to say sidekick. I'm just struggling talking at the moment. I would say Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite. Straight up. I know that would kind of make Eileen jealous if I had Elizabeth following me around all day long. But just think about it. She could toss me a whole bunch of coins. She could bring things into reality through tears. Although that doesn't sound super safe. I saw it in the trailers, and that's all I'm going off right now. I haven't actually played that far in the game. At this point, as of recording this, I made it to the Blue Ribbon, and that's where I stopped. I tried to record an episode of Bioshock today, and it just didn't work out. So, I left it at that. I wasn't feeling it. I'm going to try again tomorrow. I can't wait to meet Elizabeth in my own game, though. But I would say that she looks like an amazing companion. <laughs> she doesn't say anything, but still. <laughs> sidekick. Sidekick is the word I should have used, not companion. So, let's move along quickly. Let's push that from our minds. Connor Squires. Would you ever consider doing an adventure worthy or playthrough of the Total War series? If a new Total War game comes out, I would do it if it's not too expensive. I can't really afford to buy all the expensive games on Steam. Things like this new Defiance MMO that came out. I would have loved to have given my opinion on what was going on with that because I saw a lot of controversy surrounding it. But I'm not going to pay $60 for an MMO that I'd probably pay, uh, play for like a couple of hours and then stop playing. So with that said, the same thing goes for games that I would do adventure with these of or on. I don't want to buy the super expensive games if I'm just going to do that one adventure with on it and probably not play it again. Some people gift me games and stuff, which is super amazing, and I thank them very much for that. But I'm going to stick with doing mostly indie games and some of the bigger AAA titles. I'm going to get back to talking about this a bit later, because there are some questions regarding that. But I can say that I will probably do something like the Total War games if a new one comes out. And other adventure worthies that I want to do that I have mentioned already are Assassin's Creed. SimCity, Dead Space, <laughs> this is Assassin's Creed 3 and Dead Space 3, and the new SimCity. Tomb Raider was recently gifted to me by Isengott, thank you so much for that. It means so much to me because both myself and Eileen are going to be playing that, and on my Steam account. And the game, after playing the first 5-10 minutes of it, just to see how it is, Seems amazing. There are so many games that I'm just picking up and playing recently that I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I wish I could have done a playthrough of this. But some of them are just not meant to be because of the time requirements and all that. But Tomb Raider seems like such a crazy and enthralling experience that I'll have to do an adventure worthy on it. And I'm probably going to do an adventure worthy extras on it too. Like just get a good bunch of footage recorded, play a lot of it. So I can just share that with you because whew, that game, if you've played it, you'll know what I mean. That game, <laughs> it's going to make me shout so much. and It's terrifying too. Anyway, next, Josh Leckie, my question, would you ever do a Far Cry 3 playthrough? Probably not. I've been playing that game on and off for the last couple of months and it's been so good. Again, another one of those that I'm sad I didn't pick up and play when it came out, but... Uh, Again, it just wasn't meant to be. I can't play everything as much as I want to. I just can't. Then, Matt Liegfeld. 
You actually pronounce my last name perfectly, which is shocking, since I have friends who can't say or spell it correctly. I'm very impressed, Lumen. Thank you. Thank you so much. I lucked out. Anyway, I don't think anyone has asked this before, but I noticed that you never swear or use any type of profanity in your videos. Is this a conscious effort to keep your channel rated PG, or is that just who you are as a person? I'd say it's mostly the former and quite a lot the latter. I don't not swear. There are swear words that I would say, but the F word, when it comes out of my mouth, it just doesn't sound natural. I don't say that word. There are a lot of swear words that I just don't say, okay? But there are others that I do say, and if I do say them, then it's jokingly. It is as a joke, and they should not be taken seriously. Back to the former, though. I do like to keep my channel PG, because, come on. If you can't express yourself without swearing, then I just don't know. Sure, it's funny sometimes, but it's not necessary. I watched one of PewDiePie's recent videos and... <sighs> Some of the words that guy says. How? How is it possible? Anyway. Fine. I would say it's definitely a conscious effort. I think that most of the videos that I put out, and this depends on some of the games that I'm playing, because I would not say that after seeing what I've seen in something like Bioshock, for instance, I would not say that most of these games are PG rated, but I'd say yes, it's a conscious effort, and I would like it if people of all ages could watch my videos. So there you go. It is also mostly who I am as a person. Herakulum. Herakulum. Lumen, do you know how much Fraps costs? Yes, yes I do. It costs $35, and if you do purchase it, and you use it for your YouTube channel like I do, it'll be the best $35 you ever spend. Peter Capes, 2. Hey Lumen, first of all, great and interesting video, like always. Here's my question, have you ever played the game Deus Ex Human Revolution, and if so, what was your favorite ending, and what do you generally think about the topic of human augmentation? Good question. Especially the second part, the first part not so much, because I do actually have an entire playthrough of that game up on my channel. It's not the best playthrough, but I enjoyed the game. By best, I mean it was recorded with my old headset mic, so the quality is not great. My commentary was still a bit iffy back then, but I still feel like if you enjoy my commentary, you'll be able to go back and watch that and enjoy it. My favorite ending was the one I picked. I think it's the coexistence ending. This is, there you go. I had to fix my little chair cloth. For those that don't know, I sit on a wooden chair. It's like a straight-backed wooden chair. It's just much more comfortable because if I do play games, I like to sit straight up, straight-backed, and be comfortable. So, the coexistence ending. And I'm not sure which of them that was. I know there were four endings, or was it five? Anyway, I'm not sure which of them it was, but... I feel that it's definitely something that has a place. It's good, especially if it can be used to help people. It's obviously not good if it gets abused and if people get addicted to it and if it doesn't work properly. But it's something that I feel in our world here should be looked into. I mean, it's already been looked into, but it should be furthered because I think it is part of how people can help other people in the future. Other people who need that help. Not other people who want to augment their eyes so they can have a little reticle to aim with their gun. No. No, not that. I mean, help people who actually need it. That's what I think about it. So there you go. Dadexta. I'm sorry about XCOM. I'm so sorry. Oh. Glad to see you still leaving comments, though. I'm sorry, though. <laughs> hey, Lumen, if I remember correctly, the name Tales of Lumen came from a book that you and or Eileen were writing at some point. What happened to it? It's sort of in cryostatic genic sleep right now, and it's something we're going to get back to in the future, or at least I'll get back to the writing part, and I'm keen. 
for one day being able to, I've said this like a thousand times already, but one day being able to translate that into a project or series that I can do on my YouTube channel, we'll see. I'm hoping that you guys like it when that time comes. I'm sure you will. I'm sure like 99% of you will like it. And I can't wait to show it to you, tell you about it, immerse you in the world that I created in my head. Now, MMA Tomas. Healing sightings are so scarce. She almost reminds me of a super rare Pokemon. She keeps a super low profile. Um, that's created a mysterious vibe. If people started asking her questions, do you think you could convince her to participate in these videos? Hmm. That's the first question. There's another one for Helene, actually. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think, or not trying to think, trying to get a project together with her. We're going to do it at some point. It's probably going to be amazing. So wait for that. But who knows? Maybe if I do do a QA and a and there are a whole bunch of questions for her, Maybe I can get her involved somehow. We'll see. But MMA Tomas' question is, for Helene, what were your first impressions of Swen when you guys met? So I asked her this. I asked her to tell me what her first impressions were of me. And she says that I was funny. We actually met at a LAN. She says I was funny and I was always laughing funny in both senses of the word i assume because i had these squinty eyes because i was always laughing <laughs> so, so there you go she was very shy when she was at the lands and she actually went to the brother i think and i was hanging around with the cool kids <laughs> so there you go. well i don't know if they were actually the cool kids we thought we were the cool kids because we were having so much fun and having fun is cool there you go so <laughs> that's what she thought Funny and always laughing. I don't know what else was involved. If there were any other feelings she was feeling, then she kept them to herself. Peter Capes 2. Sorry for posting two times. You can post as many times as you like. Go crazy. Don't even worry about it. Imagine you have a child. What game or movie do you want him or her to play or watch definitely? And why? Greetings from Germany. Sorry for the bad English. Your English is just fine. I understand exactly what you're asking. I think that's an amazing question. So, I'm going to go with game here. And I would say, hmm, a few of the games that, in my opinion, educated me when I was growing up were games like the Ultima series, the Final Fantasy series, and the Baldur's Gate, or let's say Forgotten Realm series. So, Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, Planescape Torment. Planescape Torment, not so much. Forgotten Realms or whatever, but you know what I'm saying. Those games, Ultima, Final Fantasy, even Quake 3. Okay, but Quake 3, not so much educational. Uh, I would say those three series, I'm going to just call them series. My webcam's flashing all sorts of funny stuff here, so if it does have flashes, I apologize. But those three series are, in my opinion, super amazing. The later games in the series especially, I wouldn't want to let my child sit through Final Fantasy 1 or 2 or whatever, maybe on, on iDevices, but um, things like Ultima 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever, those are also a little bit too archaic. I think anything from Ultima 7 Plus and anything from Final Fantasy 7 Plus, but I would also say that Final Fantasy 3 and is it 5? Or is it six? I think it might be six. I don't know. Are also worth playing. But those are super cool. I will definitely at some point get my child to play one of those. Baldur's Gate. Maybe I'll get my child Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition on the iPad one day. Because that game... You know, I feel... It's sort of... It's funny saying it because it's such a silly thing to say. But it expanded my mind. Okay, it's sort of opens you up to a lot of new things. It introduces you to proper storytelling without you having to flip through the pages of a book and actually read a full-on book. And I think that is really important. It really is. Amazing character development. You get so attached to the characters in these games. That just means that it's a good experience. So those things... As for movies, I don't know. I've got a lot of really good favorites... But they're not as important to me 
or at least they're not as big a deal in my life as something like the games would be. I don't know, movies, there are so many classics. Like I keep saying, my favorites, Blade Runner, Fifth Element, um, Indiana Jones series, definitely going to have to have my child watch that for sure, and a whole bunch of others. There are so many others that I just wouldn't be able to think of now. So there you go. Molda22. Lumen, I hope Eileen won't have any problem with this question. She definitely won't. I don't see why she would. She's not that kind of girl. What kind of girls do you like when it comes to looks? Hmm. I've noticed in quite a few of your playthroughs that you really liked female characters with shorter hairstyles. Sometimes very short. Or even a mohawk. I think that Eileen also has a shorter kind of hairstyle, so it fits. Bye there once again. Thanks for everything and say hello to Nero, Helene, and Oren for me. And if the mouse is not dead yet, say hello to him or her. I think the mouse is gone now. I don't know if it's dead, but it's not here. And for some reason, I still haven't got those videos up. It'll take me like two seconds to edit it together and put the sinister music with it, but I just didn't do it yet. I don't know why. Helene heard the hello there. Nero's not here right now. And Oren, maybe I'll see him next weekend. But... Helene, actually, when I met her, had long hair. And for the first couple of years we were together, she had really long hair. So that's not really relevant in our relationship. I think Helene looks amazing with any type of hair. But I do generally tend to prefer, and I'm not sure why, but I generally tend to prefer shorter hair on my characters. I don't know. I would never be able to say, hey, that girl's not attractive to me because she's got long hair. That would never happen. Ever. Not in a million years. That would not be why I would say that kind of thing. But, I don't know. I like hairstyles that are slightly different. And the mohawk and stuff, hey, I think that a girl is incredibly brave if she has a mohawk. And that says a lot about their personality. I sh suppose there could be a flip side. And instead of brave, it could be something else less desirable. But, you know, I like it. I have a, a thing for look, for short hair, for seeing short hair, and I think it looks better, in my opinion, on most of the characters that I've created. So, I suppose it is just a personal preference kind of thing. I don't have anything technical to back this up. And I suppose everyone has their own tastes. Yes. I would definitely not be against long hair. Or traditional hair, in any way. I hope I actually answered that correctly. But I do like short hair, and I do sometimes like the crazy hair, because it adds more character to your character. There you go. So, Ova Mahan. You've got an amazing name, it just flows off the tongue. Obviously, you're a huge Final Fantasy and Chrono Trigger fan. Have you ever played or heard of Secret of Mana? So, or Mana. I actually played that way back in the day on a emulator of sorts, and I think I can actually get it on iPhone now. But if I'm not mistaken, and if I remember correctly, it's like a sort of Final Fantasy, but with real-time combat. Uh, it's like all these rip-offs that come on on iDevices called, like, is it called Zenio or Zeni Zenonia or whatever? It's like a real-time version of Final Fantasy, and the story, I think, if I remember correctly, once again, it was so long ago, was super good. It was, once again, just the kind of experience that I really enjoyed. But it's not a solo game. I think you do get a party and everything in it. And it's kind of old school. So, I have definitely heard of that. And I think I enjoyed it. How could I not? Then, Madara Fanboy 804. Lumen, someone has probably already asked you this, but could you maybe put links in the description so we can just jump straight to the questions we'd like to hear answered? It would be fantastic for impatient people like me that's not going to happen. As much as I want or would love to do that, at this point, if I had to do that, it would take me another hour and a half on top of the time I spend setting the video up to just do that, if not longer. And they wouldn't fit in the description of the video. I used to do that for every single question, but it just doesn't work out anymore because there are so many questions and they just don't all fit in. So the chances are slim that I'd ever do that. Maybe if I become much bigger than I am now and I employ someone to do that for me, maybe it'll be Helene. 
<laughs> then someone else can do it, but I don't have the time to do that. I also prefer that people watch the entire video. There you go. As a form of torture. Then, the Efren Lopez, hi Lumen, have you watched Breaking Bad? I'm a huge fan of the show and I want to hear what you think about it. If you haven't watched it, please do. And please say, Los, what? Oh, Los Polos Hermanos. I love that. That is actually, in English, The Chicken Brothers, I think. And yes, I've watched Breaking Bad. I was a big fan of the show too. I don't know if we watched the whole last season finished, but the show was great. It started off kind of crazy, kind of intense, kind of grim at times, but it definitely grows on you. The characters are great. Uh... It's action-packed. It's a good series. Really good. It's a little bit adult at times, but, you know, I'm actually an adult, believe it or not. So I get to watch things like that and things like Game of Thrones. But it was great. I, I really enjoyed it. I find that some of the characters are inadvertently just really funny to me. Like Hank, who's the brother... And Jesse's obvious. Jesse Pinkman is just such a joke all the time. I love it. Like, in a good way, he's great to watch. Great to watch. And Hank, just because he's... The best word to describe him is sometimes he's a doofus. Like, he's just a bit goofy. I enjoy it. Then. Anon... Oh, Anonymous. <laughs> it's actually Anon Y Mouse, but it's Anonymous. Hi Lumen, have you done a Reddit AMA yet? If not, you need to ASAP. I haven't, and I just don't think that I'd get that many questions. And added to that, look, I'm answering a whole bunch of questions right now. Yes, I should probably do it, because it might get me a bit of exposure or whatever, and maybe some new people would find me on Reddit. But what would I say? Hey, I'm Lumen, I have less <laughs> subscribers than most other people. I'll answer your questions. I don't know what... That's a question that I could ask you. What would I say if I had to do an AMA? What would I say? Hey, I'm Lumen. I... Ask me anything. I have no idea. I have no idea how many questions I'd even get. The chances are it would get buried under all the other AMAs there. Who knows? Or wherever I put it. All the other posts. XL Medusa. Hi Lumen. I have a question for you. How did it go in your school years, grades, popularity, etc.? So I keep thinking to myself I had bad grades, but I think I did reasonably well. I think I just didn't pay much attention to it. So I wasn't the top student in the class or anything like that. My English and Afrikaans were both really good. I remember that. My other subjects were all average. Well, not average, probably a little bit better than average. They were okay. I had higher grade maths all the way up to matric, and then I think in matric I passed standard grade but not higher grade which was fine for me i was like well okay i was in a very small town school oh no wait so i was in a small town school from standard well sub a all the way through to stand five and then from stand five to matric so from grade six no seven eight i'm bad we work with standards not grades so from grade eight to grade 12 I did homeschooling. So popularity and grades and all that stuff. They weren't really something I worried or thought about much. Popularity was zero because I was at home with my sister most of the time. So that happened. I obviously had friends and stuff from school and I saw them and all that. But when I was actually in school, I was just one of the normal people. I wouldn't say I was the class clown or I was the popular kid or I was anything like that. I had friends. I wasn't like an odd one out or anything like that. It was normal. Very, very, very normal, which is strange considering where I am now. But oh, I was actually the one person in the entire class that played video games. I'm not even joking. I don't think there was a single other person in my class specifically that played games. By video games, I mean, you know, PlayStation, PC, whatever, any form of games. No one else even knew anything about that. So there you go. Where was that? Popularity grades. I answered all of it. That's how it went in my school years. 
<sighs> I'm glad they're over and done with. Because it was really boring. Then, Pobap. Hi, Illumin, are you ready? First question. Oh, this is a good set of questions here. How do you make a successful and humoristic video? In your words, of course. So, it's difficult. <laughs> it's difficult to answer. I don't think it's difficult to make a successful and humoristic video. I don't think I'm the best person to tell you that because my videos aren't all really successful where views and likes and shares and whatever are concerned. But, hey, I consider most of them pretty decent. And I would say that for it to be successful, you've got to be yourself. You can't go and put on a big elaborate show and try and impress people with that or try and make people laugh with that unless that's what you're doing. Unless you're a comedian and you're cracking jokes left, right and center, that's fine. But if you're going to sort of make a video that really works, then you're going to have to be yourself unless you're making something that's not all about your personality. It's something that I always say, do what you're good at. If you can do really fancy stuff with After Effects or in Adobe Premiere or Sony Vegas or whatever, and you can make the best montages or of anything. I'm not mean like kill shot montages or whatever in, in any game. You know, even games like Guild Wars, for instance, you can make montages of pretty much anything in there. Super Adventure Box released just a day or two ago. If you had to go and make a montage of everything there is to do and see in there with cool music because they released all the music, then that would probably be a successful video. I would love to do that, but it would take me so long to be able to do all of that, put it all together, that the chances are slim, but there you go. There's so much that goes into making a successful and humoristic video. <sighs> be yourself, do what you're good at. Second question, how do you promote a successful or humorous video? My goodness, please tell me that. I have no idea. I do all sorts of playthroughs, news episodes, adventure worthies, and I don't post them anywhere. I post my videos on Facebook. I share them to, say, the devs of the games, stuff like that, but I just don't know what to do. I'm bad at this part of YouTube. I need a PR guy to work for me to try and get my name out there in a non-intrusive and non-annoying way. But I'm bad at this part of YouTube. If I could just, like, record videos, pump the videos out, make good content and have someone else handle that, I would let it happen in a heartbeat. I would. I really would. I have no idea. I can't quite honestly answer that for you. He says here through Twitter, Facebook, local newspaper, what's the best way of promoting in your opinion? In my opinion, you've got to promote in a non-harassing way. You can't go and shove it in other people's faces and say, here, watch this. You have to do it in a good way, in a way that people will like. And I don't know how to do that. Okay. The internet is cruel in that way. It's difficult. It's something that I personally know nothing about. And that's probably why I don't have more subscribers. <sighs> I always thought that, and that's how I came into this. And I still think it. I just think that if you keep putting good content out and you stick with your guns and you consistent with it and your content just improves instead of decreases in quality, then one day you'll make it. That's how what I believe in. But... You know, I have been doing this for like, what, nearly three years now, and I think close to three years now, a month or two away, or a month away from three years, I think, and hey, I've only got 20,000 or less than 20,000 subscribers to show for it, so obviously I'm not the best person to preach about this, but yeah, I'm still obviously super happy with what I've been able to do. I would have been even happier, obviously, if I could get my name out there more get more people to watch my videos because that is what I make them for. It's difficult. It's really difficult. Third question. Do you think there are any similarities between you and other great YouTubers in the way of being funny and in and entertaining just in general? I suppose so. There are similarities between the way I do videos and the way Jesse Cox, Toby Turner, dare I even say PewDiePie, a lot of people. There are lots of similarities in that some people 
base their channels on their personality, on community interaction, on straight up news, on criticism like Total Biscuit and, you know, thoughtful, proper educational videos. So there'll always be similarities like that. But in the way of being funny and entertaining, hey, the first two that come to mind, and it's probably because I don't watch that many YouTubers, would probably be Jesse Cox and Toby Turner. Just because Toby Turner, I don't know, I think he actually has a commentary style that's similar to mine, except his is a little bit more out there. And if you take his and mash it up with Jesse Cox's, maybe you get me. And then you have to slap an accent on top of that too. I don't know. Jesse Cox is a genuinely funny guy. He really is. Some people don't like him. A lot of people do. I am one of the people that do. So, there are similarities, sure. There are also similarities between what I do and what Total Biscuit does. But not in the way of being funny and entertaining. Maybe entertaining because I think some people do find news entertaining or proper thoughtful videos. Then you could also move on to my vlogs and stuff like that. There are people that do those. In a similar fashion to how I do them. I don't know. I just don't know. Then, Timu. Hi, Evil Lumen. What evil things do you do in your free time? Oh, well. I do all sorts of crazy things like... Flicking Nero Schnoot while he's trying to sleep. Like a good daddy. A good evil daddy. <laughs> I... Pretend to be about to give Elena a kissy, and then I lick her instead. <laughs> Truly evil and ingenious. If you have a significant other, a loved one, that you give kisses to, try that one day. Try that. <laughs> they will be disgusted. And it's amazing. It's the most amazing thing. I do that all the time. And those are some of the evil things that I do. I love it. Mordred P777. Hello, Lumen. I posted a couple of questions in the past, but my question for you today would be this. What do you think of the direction in which... Oh, this is a really good question. Ooh. What do you think of, of the direction in which part of the gaming industry is pushing? That is, offering games as a service instead of as a product you own. And... What about publishers that go to great lengths to manipulate games in order uh, that would otherwise be different <clears throat> in order to do that? I don't know if I made sense. Yes, you did. And I can't wait to answer this. Just give me a second to take a sip of water. So, I think it's bad, but there is some good in it. Now, the way that the gaming community works or what it's moving towards in that you don't own the games that you bought, I think that there can be both good and bad to that. Good in that they've set it up in such an easy way. Steam is the best thing to happen to PC gaming since forever. And I think the whole Steam platform and what Valve have done with it is just awe-inspiring. It's something else. It truly is. I think it's great. I just think it's not great when people go to great lengths to abuse it. Because it can happen. It really can. But I think, at its core, the idea is great. It really is good. And it's something that's definitely going to stick around, if not expand greatly in the future. And then... You know, I think a lot of people can work around that. If they don't want to release their games on Steam and stuff, they can. But they will be missing out. You know, it's such a good platform to get your work out there that I think most publishers just can't ignore it right now. They can't. Then, publishers that go to great lengths to manipulate the games that would otherwise be different in order to do that, people like EA, with their little... Oh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it's terrible. You know, what I hate most about it, and hate is the word I'm choosing to use here because it's so frustrating, is that often the people that are actually making the game aren't the ones behind this. They're making this game from the bottom of their heart. They're pouring their heart and soul 
into this amazing experience that they want people to jump into and enjoy. To jump into and be carried away by. And, you know, they do this and then the publishers come along like EA, the big guys, and they say, hey, listen here, there's this little space in your game. Can we just shove the microtransactions in there? Hey, hey, wait. There's no way for us to make extra money after people have bought the game in your game currently. We should just find a way to put that in there. That's bad. That is really bad. And in some cases it can work. Some people do it well. Some people do it ethically. Even, even developers that you'd expect wouldn't do it ethically, do it ethically. Because they're gamers. They know that they would be doing a disservice to other gamers out there. They understand that it's not right. So they do it in that way. An example. Grinding Gear Games with Path of Exile. They have released or semi-released this free-to-play masterpiece. Free to play. Then they add their microtransaction store where you can get a whole bunch of really cool stuff for your characters. And it's not going to give someone the advantage in game. It's not pay to win. There is only stuff in there that's going to sort of enhance your experience in that way. Then you can look at Guild Wars, where you pay once for the game. It's been on special countless times. It didn't even cost that much anymore. You buy Guild Wars once. They have things that you can buy in the store that sometimes perhaps could be construed as a little bit unethical, but they're not really because at any point you can actually go out, buy gems with your gold in game, and then buy the items in the store. So you can get it all by just playing the game. And if you're really smart and you know how the economy and stuff works, you could probably play it, you know, hustle your way to making a lot of money and then buying the gems without too much hassle, without spending any real money. There's so much good. There's so much potential for good in all of it that it's frustrating when you see people or these big publishers or companies or whatever twisting it as they do. It's frustrating. It really is. <sighs> but there you go. I don't know if I really laid my thoughts out properly, but I think I said everything I needed to say there. I love Steam. I hate when people ruin games with things like microtransactions or other things like that. Then, slightly wounded. Do you pay for all your games on through Steam or are the majority of them gifted? Also, is your Steam wishlist up to date or have you bought some of the games already? Everything on my Steam wishlist is stuff that I still want or, you know, a lot of the stuff on there I just added because, and that's probably lower down on the list, but the stuff at the top, obviously I want to get at some point. And most of the stuff I get on Steam, I definitely pay for myself. Most of the stuff I do adventure with is on and stuff, but I have been gifted a couple of games recently, which, you know, I thank the people for. It's super, super helpful because I've said it a thousand million times. I don't earn a lot of money at the moment. YouTube is obviously not paying for very much at all, but, uh, you know, it takes a bit of strain off me if I can have a game like, for instance, Tomb Raider recently bought for me that I really wanted because I wanted to try Tomb Raider out and then I can make videos on it and I can share the experience with a lot of people. If 5,000 people watch my Tomb Raider adventure with you that I'm going to get out at some point, then I enlightened 5,000 people. I spread the enjoyment. I gave them the uh, that experience that they might not otherwise have had. So that makes me happy. Most of the games I buy myself, I do get gifted games on occasion, and I'm so appreciative of it. As I said, it's super cool. Thank all of you that gift me stuff. It just helps out. It really does. Now, moving on. Jack West. Hey, Luma, it's me. That guy <laughs> always annoying you with silly tactics and stuff on XCOM videos. You know what? You may see it as annoying, but it's actually the only thing that's keeping me going. I was thinking... Have you ever played Dragon Age Origins? If not, have you ever planned on playing it and maybe doing a playthrough for us to watch? I have actually played and finished Dragon Age Origins and I loved it. 
the chances are slim that I do a playthrough of it just because of the time constraints I currently have and you know because of the fact that the chances are it probably won't get that many views and at this point I really need to think about doing things that get me a lot of views so I can maybe you know get more people interested in my videos get more subscribers actually make it work as a business as well as as just enjoyment because obviously I need to keep things going forward so there you go so he actually said please 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 I'm so sorry I hate not saying yes but if yes hope you liked it I loved it my favorite game in years unfortunately Dragon Age 2 was eh I agree with that Dragon Age 2 was eh I didn't even get to play all the way through it because I just didn't I didn't I liked it. I enjoyed Dragon Age Origins immensely. Then, Thor Sundquist. That's a very cool nickname. Lumen, have you ever watched the RWBY trailers on Rooster Teeth's channel? I have no idea what that is. I have no idea. If you did see them, what do you think? And if not, you really should watch them. I'll check them out. Then, Anonymous again. Anon Y Mouse. What video editing software do you use? You said Windows Movie Maker was good for basic editing. Is that what you use? Have you ever thought about growing a full mustache? <laughs> I think it would look quite good on you. What does Eileen think about it? She thinks itchy, scratchy, and... I don't know. I don't really like the idea of just having hair here. I'd rather have hair, if hair everywhere here, all over my face. But generally, I just don't shave because of convenience and... I think that I do look better with at least a bit of hair somewhere on my face. I don't know. As for video editing software, I use Sony Vegas for the most part and I like it. I think it's easy enough to get into and it does what I need it to do for the most part. It also sometimes doesn't accept videos it should actually accept which makes it a bit of a pain and sometimes it doesn't render stuff properly but whatever you know it's a decent enough program it does what i need it to do then again anonymous he's actually got three questions here have you ever thought about how having a child would affect your youtube capabilities since you'd have to juggle the baby your exercise outdoors routine and gaming and youtube maintenance yes i have thought about that and it's going to be difficult it's going to be very difficult. I don't know. And on your barking. Let's hope he comes around here so we can all hear him bark loudly. I think it's going to be really, really, really difficult. And I'm probably not going to be getting much sleep. I don't get much sleep now. But it's going to be much more difficult then. That's all I can really say. It's going to make everything... <sighs> make juggling everything... A much more precarious act let's just say that i don't know how it's gonna like affect me and uploading and everything like that i don't think that i'll have to slow things down that much i just think i'll need to manage my time much better that's what it'll come down to then the last question from anonymous hi lumen have you ever heard of the game dead state and have you thought about making a playthrough when it comes out later this year? Hmm. If it's any good. He actually says if it's any good at the end there, which is good. I did see a bit of Dead State stuff. It's like a zombie survival thing, sort of like DayZ. And the chances are if it comes around the same time as DayZ Standalone, I'll play that instead. Or any other really good zombie game, whatever. I will probably give it a try though. We'll see. Flying just to fall. Why aren't you playing any multiplayer? That's like a really good question. There's more to it though, hold on. Ah, water. And spitting. <laughs> so here we go. BF3, Call of Duty, awesome notes, which I think you would love. It's very hard, but fun when you know your way around it. Uh, I think you should play Gotham City Imposters, Assassin's Creed Multiplayer is amazing, when the servers aren't bugging, Far Cry 3, etc. There are many cool multiplayer games, and I know... I enjoy watching those gameplay videos, and I think all your subs would love that as well. Single-player games get a bit tiresome sometimes, in my opinion. You know, I don't know why I'm not playing multiplayer games. I have no idea. The only multiplayer game or proper multiplayer game I'm playing at the moment is Guild Wars 2, 
And I played a bit of Warframe today. Hey, there you go. But, you know, it just comes down to convenience, I guess. Most multiplayer games tend to be a bit more difficult to record. Single player games, you've got a lot more to play off of. And they're not quite as unexpected as multiplayer games. So they tend to be a bit easier to handle. I'm not saying I have a tough time recording multiplayer games. I'm just saying single player ones are less likely to give you problems. As for games like Battlefield, Call of Duty, those things, you know, I just don't play those games myself. Come to think of it, I don't really play many games at all myself. You know, by myself, I mean off camera. I mostly play what you see me playing. I play some iOS games in my spare time. My spare time being when I'm lying in bed about to go to sleep. That's when I play iOS games. But, you know, I want to. I really would like to. I know a lot of people want to see me play Planetside. A lot of people want to see me play Dota. So I think that that's going to be sort of in the cards for once I clear my schedule up again. Which is going to be soon, I hope. Really soon. I also hope to do more in Guild Wars soon. And the next question is going to be a good, you know, addition to this. Also from Flying Just to Fall. Do you know anything about the MMO Wildstar and the MMO Marvel Heroes? I think you should take a look at them. I personally can't wait to play them. I don't know Marvel Heroes at all. I do know about Wildstar and I like the look of it. I like the look of a lot of stuff in it. But in its entirety, I think it could be a little vanilla. I think the word is vanilla. I've used that twice in this episode already. But I want them to go crazy with it. I want them to do a whole bunch of stuff that other MMOs aren't doing. I saw their video on housing, which looks super cool. But I am interested in Wildstar, as I am with most new MMOs. Like, I had a look at Neverwinter, which was kind of fun. But it didn't impress me as much as I wanted it to. I will check Wildstar out at some point, And I will do a bit of research on Marvel Heroes. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's all about. I should probably have a look because, you know, the Marvel heroes are awesome. There are some really amazing characters there, or dare I say heroes, that could be involved. I just hope it's not another DC Universe online, in the sense of the way it ended up working out. I don't think things are going too well for DC Universe at the moment. He says at the end here, especially Wildstar, it's really your style. Yes. It looks great. I can't wait to test it. I actually have on my to-do list here on my phone male Wildstar devs, male Elder Scrolls Online devs. I don't know why I said devs and not team or PR or whatever, but I need to speak to those people to see if I can at some point get access. And by at some point, I mean when the betas actually go live for the general public, because those are both games that I'm really interested in. Really interested. Maybe at one day, I'll replace... Skyrim with Elder Scrolls Online. You know, whatever. Then, Crusade 37... 1? No, Crusade 37. Have you or, Eileen, you or Eileen ever tried skydiving or any other extreme activity? No. I'm sad to say no. Both sad and happy because I think skydiving would be terrifying. Maybe I'd start slow. Maybe we'd go skiing first. Something like that. I would love to go skiing. I don't care. I just roll down the mountain. I don't need no skis or no snowboard or anything like that. I just roll down the mountain. Or sled or something. I just want to go to somewhere where there's lots of snow one day. I don't think Eileen wants to. But I'm taking her with. One day. One day when we've actually got free time. Whatever. Then, keep doing what you're doing. I love watching your videos. Looking forward to joining your guild in Guild Wars 2, but it costs me $30 to switch servers, so I don't think that'll happen. Say hi to Nero for me later, dude. So, how does that work? So you can't guess between US and EU servers. Is that a thing now? I, I completely lost track of what was happening. I know you can guess for free between EU servers, but I'm not sure if US is now excluded. Is US excluded? Eileen doesn't know either. I don't know. That sucks, though. That really sucks. I don't know why it costs $30. So, Freeman Beast. Oh, and I will say hi to Nero and Eileen. Thank you. 
Freeman Beast. What are your PC specs? Oh, I can't wait to talk about this. <laughs> I've got an i7-860. It's kind of old right now. It's up in there. I've got a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 465. That's like two, three generations below what it should be. I've got 8 gigs of RAM running at 1666 hertz. I have a whole bunch of hard drives. I can actually look at my computer. I think I've got a 600 gig primary drive, which is not very fast. I don't even have an SSD or anything. Then I've got a 700 gig Velociraptor, which is kind of cool. It's a mechanical drive that's a little bit faster than a normal one. That was a good investment. i got to say it works really well. And then I've got like a two terabyte Western Digital Black. Decent amount of space. I got a Western Digital Green, Caviar Green, whatever it is, the power, not the power saving one, the storage version of the drive in Eileen's PC for my backup, a three terabytes. Three terabytes is enough for my backup at the moment, at least. It's three quarters of the way full though. So that's for all the videos I've ever done. I put on there and hopefully that hard drive never crashes. Then other stuff, what is there? That's it, I've got a CD-ROM. I use a Razer Octosa keyboard and a SteelSeries Xi Ruse Edition mouse. I don't know, I, what other things are they talk about? My motherboard, I don't know. It's an Asus or Asus, uh, something or other. I don't know, I, I don't know, that's it, there you go. I know all the technical stuff, but there's nothing that really needs to be mentioned other than the chip, RAM, graphics card, hard drives. There you go. Nothing special in the lines of cooling or anything like that because, hey, it works. The case is nothing remarkable either. Then, <clears throat> Kevin Flynn. Hey, Lumen. Hello from Germany. Hello. We get. <laughs> I'm not going to start with German now. I just wanted to say I love all the vids and I don't miss any of them. Oh, okay. You mean that in a good way. <laughs> okay. Because that didn't go anywhere. Wanted to ask you, when The Witcher 3 comes out, will you do a Let's Play? And did you ever play the first two? Hmm. So, I didn't. I spent like five minutes in Witcher 1 and I want to play Witcher 2. But you know what? I'm going to wait till I get a new PC and then play it because I tried The Witcher 2 and let me just tell you that that thing destroyed my PC. I don't know why. I even looked if I could record a video on it, but man, it just didn't work. That game, it needs a beast of a PC or something. I don't even know. Maybe I'll go back and play The Witcher 1, but I heard that The Witcher 1 was a little bit frustrating in terms of its mechanics and gameplay and stuff. Who knows? I've got The Witcher 1. I won it from a little giveaway on GOG, the Enhanced Edition. And I've got The Witcher 2 on Steam. And as I said, I will definitely play The Witcher 2 and probably give you guys my thoughts before The Witcher 3 comes out when I got a new PC. Don't know when that's going to be. I have to save up a good amount of money before I can even think about getting a PC so that we don't starve here. So we have some extra. But at some point, I will play that. And I can't wait. I've heard so much good stuff about it, especially Witcher 2. And The Witcher 3 looks amazing. If I really enjoy Witcher 1 and 2, and I think Witcher 3 could be good Let's Play material, then I'll do it. I just think that having such an adult game on my channel would be a bit weird. But who knows? Maybe it would be a nice breath of fresh air. I don't know. Then, another thing that was in my mind, would you ever... Oh, have you ever watched the Tron movies... Or the Tron series Uprising. And what did you think? Hmm. So I watched the movies, both the 85 Tron movie and the new one. I enjoyed them immensely. Even the new one. I know a lot of people didn't like it. But I... I'm easy to please. Especially when it comes to movies. I think that some movies should just be enjoyed for what they are. Good fun. I had fun watching Tron. It was good. The music was interesting as well. The visuals were great. The actors were good to look at. They did what they needed to do. I'm obviously a huge fan of... Um, what's his name? 
Jeff. No, I can't forget his name. What's his name? I can't forget his name because he's like one of the best actors ever. I'm Googling it. Tron. Tron. There you go. Tron Legacy. What's his name? Uh, so far. Jeff Bridges. Goodness, how can I forget his name? Jeff Bridges is amazing. That guy is always good. What was the movie that he was in? Something about a goat. I have to look again now. With with George Clooney. Ugh. I can't I can't believe I'm doing Bridges. Google with Lumen. That's what we're doing right now. Jeff Bridges on IMDB. Something about a goat. He was such a laugh in that. Men who stare at goats. Oh my goodness, that movie. Oh my goodness. And True Grit. That movie was so good as well. I'm closing this right now. Jeff Bridges is amazing. So I enjoyed all of that. I haven't watched Tron Uprising. I saw it. It piqued my interest. And then it just sort of disappeared. I don't know. Maybe I'll check it out. If I've got some free time, I'll put it on my phone or something. Have a look at it. Because it does look okay. I liked what they did with the animation style in that. Because I did see a lot of it before it came out. Like the previews and stuff. And I'm kind of keen to check it out. Then, the last question from MPRI. Z M I C O one or zero one. What do you think about coming to Croatia? So I think going to Croatia would be great, but traveling is definitely not something I would want to do right now. I have such a long list of dream destinations that it'll take me the rest of my life to get through all of them. I don't even know. I've heard a lot of good things about Croatia though, and I think that if you could just go to a country like that and just spend some time there doing your own thing, going on a grand adventure of your own, then it would be super cool. But as I said, so many places I want to go. So many. And sadly, that's going to be it for this episode. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the form of comments. It's late now. It's midnight here. And I'm still sitting here recording videos. Helene is also thankfully still here. Nero is, however, not. He was barking, he stopped barking, now he's probably sleeping. So right now I'm probably going to stop recording, get something to eat, which is probably a terrible idea before going to sleep. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe watch something, maybe play a little bit more Tomb Raider. I don't want to spoil Tomb Raider for myself if I'm going to record a video, because it seems amazing thus far, and I want to do it. I really do. Maybe we'll watch something. I don't know. Check back some more. I actually have a Guild Wars video to edit that I want to get up. And lots of other stuff to edit. I'm not going to talk about that now. Check back some more. Leave those comments in the form of questions. Or the other way around too. Questions in the form of comments. And they can be about anything. If you did make it all the way to the end now, then bless you. Because that's amazing. That is some serious dedication and I appreciate it so much i see it's an hour and 13 minutes long which is intense sorry about that there were a lot of questions so leave them they can be about anything about gaming about the world about food about helene whatever most importantly though happy leaving those questions and happy all the questions i just answered happy that